Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you have decided to tune into the show. This is the Not So Daily Show, the show that comes to you daily, except when it doesn't. I'm your host, Timber Kevin, and listen, man, usually it takes a lot to do a show like this. It takes a brilliant host, a big budget, and an amazing audience. But thanks to COVID-19, all you need right now is a TV and a bookshelf. So the president decided to address us as he has done so often during the COVID-19 pandemic. And yesterday he had two things on his mind. Children going back to school during the peak and the corruption that has been going on since the relief funds have been announced. Taking into account the views of the various stakeholders and expert bodies, cabinet has decided today that all public schools should take a break for the next four weeks. Now, a lot of people had a lot of different things to say about this announcement the president made regarding children in public schools not going to school for a month. Well, that is children that are not in metric or grade seven. I think the most surprising about this announcement was that two people that usually never agree on anything besides that everything the president says is wrong agreed on this matter. Moisoni Ngozi of the EFF who have been calling for kids to be taken out of schools and stay at home for the past month or two had something very odd to say about this decision the president has made. Closing schools when the entire social and economic activities are open is futile. Kids will still be infected by their parents who are forced into 100% passenger capacity taxi transportation. When you open after one to four weeks, they will still go and infect the teachers. That sentiment is very close to what John Stienhazen had to say. The decision to actually close schools for about a month, how's the DA reacting to that this evening? Well, we don't support the decision. We think it's a very bad decision, and we don't think it's in the interest of the learners of South Africa. The decision this evening is not backed up by the science. It's not backed up by the education experts, uh, and it's certainly not backed by the data uh, that we've seen, that teachers or children are any more vulnerable to the mm -hmm. virus in schools. And I think that you know, it's also evidence that this is not a scientific decision by the fact that there's a different uh, regime for grade 12 and 7. Uh, as if they are somehow more uh, immune to the virus. One thing that shocked me is that these guys do not understand that kids are not the ones at risk. So if you have schools open, right, that is like having a take-a-lot collection facility for COVID-19 open. Whereas in the past, you just wait for it at home until it arrives, if it ever does. Now you're actually sending out your kids to go and get it at the central collection location and bring it home to you. So really, it is not about the kids getting it, it's about the kids bringing it back to you. Some people understand it, but of course there are a few people that don't understand it, and that's not just here in South Africa. The Los Angeles School District is the latest and one of the largest in the country to say they're not going back to school in the fall. Mistake. What do you tell parents and teachers who feel that it's unsafe to go back? I would tell parents and teachers that you should uh, find yourself a new person, whoever's in charge of that decision, because it's a terrible decision. because. Children and parents are dying from that trauma too. They're dying because they can't do what they're doing. We have to open our schools. Well, as much as John Stenhazen hardly ever makes sense and frankly sounds very Trump-like, one thing I do agree with him on is that setting up an SIU to investigate corruption after having had the Zondo Commission and the State Capture Commission is kind of like advising Man United to buy glorious carriers. to replace David De Gea. Spider-Man seeing Spider-Man. Speaking of corruption, in a recent tweet, AKA shows that he is clearly missing our former president, Jacob Zuma, and suggests that we are too. Um, nah. Also guys, me mentioning Jacob Zuma so close to corruption is just a coincidence. Don't read anything into it. Now, speaking of AKA and his support for guys that he has loved throughout his career, he has dropped the visuals for his brand new song, Energy, which frankly seemed like a cheaper version of Kanye West's closed on Sunday. But of course, unlike Kanye West, AKA could not have his 
baby mama and his kids there because he dumped them a long time ago before Kanye West thought about it. One thing that AKA has done before Kanye, by the way. <laughs> but of course, it would be kind of weird if he put his new girlfriend there instead of Zinkley because her and Kyra are about the same age and you wouldn't know who should carry who. And it would just become very confusing. But anyway, the video is out. Watch it or watch Clothes on Sunday. It's pretty much the same thing. You guys will decide. And in our last story for today, over in America at our biggest competition studio, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, the host Trevor Noah had Jim Carrey as a guest. You guys might know Jim Carrey from movies such as Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber and The Mask. But what you guys might be surprised to find out is that he was not actually acting. You think America will be different? You think this era, not one of consumption but of gluttony, will last forever? They're going 6,000 miles an hour around the sun and nobody's driving this bitch, said Gary Busey from the woods, where for his own reasons, he was halfway up an 80-foot pine tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for our show today, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And stay tuned for the next episode of the Not So Daily Show, the show that comes to you daily, except when it doesn't. Cheers.